Let's say, if I go to a new place, there is a dialogue that will start. You have to explore, you know, you have to find locals that know their place very well and that knows what is available and what is easy to be extracted and can be used. But also, what are the techniques, the available techniques in this new place? Africa, it may be just a farmer that told you in my field, in my field, I have a bunch of rocks, you know, and then you could just get these to make a, a foundation, you know, it helped you really save resources also, but build fast. In Montana, I met cowboys that said, you know, I have a, a big lane and I have a, a bunch of wood that I don't need. And I see in your pavilion uh, that could be, you know, you could just come and get the material from my place. I am always then focused to the quality of the material and to the relationship uh, that this material has with the environment and climate change. This building is inspiring to me because I wanted to learn from the tradition and mimic and develop the so-called Palava tree, you know, which is calling Africa to go back to the root and sit together in the shadow of a big tree and discuss daily life and the future of their community. And basically that is what politics are, are trying to do, you know to come together and discuss. In my heart, I always wanted to create a classroom, a classroom that has an open space where the student will sit in a shadow within a great structure and watch their compound, their village, and look at you know, how they can learn from this building to improve their compound and what element from their compound they can take in the future to also improve um, what I have done. Trust yourself. Don't be aware that people will say you're naive if you have a certain idea that they don't understand. So they don't understand it because it's new. So. The chance for you to be successful is to follow this path. Don't give up.
Refugees are now included in the National Health Insurance Fund in Kenya. And what that allows us to do is to get children insured. And that means that once we're able to provide those surgical services, we'll be able to get reimbursements from the National Health Insurance Fund, which will unlock a lot of financing for the health system in Kakuma refugee camp. And that will help us pay for equipment, it will help us pay our specialists, it will also help us pay for some of the um, uh, materials and consumables we need to provide safe surgery in Kakuma refugee camp. The current model right now is you wait until you get sick and then you try to, to fundraise among friends and family members. And once you do that, then you go to the hospital and that results in delay in getting care. Um, and so we're hoping to, to flip that way of doing things um, so that people are, pay a small amount um, every month, uh, but they have that insurance coverage and they, they also can access um, more, more care as a result of this intervention. So this intervention will not only help the child, but it will help the whole family um, so that the mother can, uh, can, and can give birth safely, um, the children can be immunized, um, the older parents um, can also get access to, um, to, to, to care. Refugees have so much to contribute, uh, to contribute to their new homes, uh, to contribute to their home countries. And so it is critical for them to be in good health. Having good health will also help them rebuild their home countries, uh, whether it's in person or from a distance. And that's important too, uh, because we're all connected. Every country with a significant refugee population uh, should look into adding refugees onto their insurance plan um, because that's the sustainable way of doing things. Uh, they also have a right to health and often they have uh, more health needs uh, because they've run away from conflict, they've run away from climate disasters, um, they've been in health systems that are too fragile to provide basic services. Mm -hmm.